Hello everyone and welcome to my course in clinical biochemistry titled Biochemistry and its role in medicine. Let me just share a few things about the course. This is going to be an in-depth course where we will cover all the important topics in biochemistry in a comprehensive manner. The course will be delivered entirely through online video lectures. This course is accessible for all people that is practicing medical professionals, medical students and especially PG aspirants. And there will be a special focus on need PG entrance exam preparation. Now a few things about myself. Hello everyone. Let me just introduce myself briefly. My name is Dr. Siddharth Gupta. I am a qualified physician registered with the Delhi Medical Council. And uh, I did my MBBS from Government Medical College Amritsar by, uh, by securing a merit seat, uh, by clearing the pre-medical entrance test. And uh, after my graduation, I spent some time working in hospitals doing clinical work. But then I switched careers and I became a teacher because uh, I realized that my true passion, my true calling is uh, education, it's teaching. I, uh, over the past few years, I have spent time teaching advanced science as well as English and I've also taught spoken English to working professionals who are looking to move up in their careers and uh, I also coach IELTS and now I feel this desire to give back to the medical profession to give back to the medical community and uh, I plan to use my medical knowledge as well as my teaching experience to help both working professionals, medical professionals, as well as uh, medical students and PG aspirants to understand the concepts of clinical biochemistry. But that's enough about me and let's get on with the course. Thank you. So this lecture is meant to be a brief introduction to the subjects of biochemistry as well as clinical biochemistry. Let's look at the definition of biochemistry. So the term biochemistry is self-explanatory. It is made up of two words, bios, which means life in Greek, and chemistry. So simply put, biochemistry is the chemistry of life or the chemistry of living organisms. So we have a working definition of biochemistry, and that is this, that biochemistry can be defined as the study of the chemical reactions and processes occurring within living organisms, as well as the chemicals that take part in those reactions. Now, let's talk about biomolecules and what they are. You see, almost all of the biochemical reactions occurring inside the body involve organic compounds, which are carbon-based compounds. These compounds are created inside the body of living organisms, and they exist in the form of molecules, which are called biomolecules. Just a quick recap here. I'm sure most of my viewers don't need this refresher, but this is just in case some do. This is chemistry 101. A molecule is just a group of atoms that are joined together by covalent bonds and exist as one discrete entity. The atoms may be of different elements. For example, you have carbon monoxide, which has one carbon atom and one oxygen atom, or of the same element. Example, oxygen exists as molecules containing two oxygen atoms and the same goes for nitrogen as well so note that i specifically mentioned that the bonds between the atoms in a molecule are covalent this is because ionic compounds like common salt which is sodium chloride do not typically exist as molecules rather they exist as lattices so lattices are these large three-dimensional arrangements with a definite structure that contains uh, more than billions and trillions of uh, constituent particles and when ionic compounds are uh, compounds like sodium chloride are dissolved in a solvent the lattice breaks up and the ions exist separately so to reiterate ionic compounds typically do not exist as distinct molecules now we have some major classes of biomolecules namely carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And of these, the first three, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, these are also macronutrients. Let's discuss these one by one. First, we have the carbohydrates. 
carbohydrates are primarily composed of three elements that is carbon hydrogen and oxygen the term carbohydrates literally means hydrates of carbon as the general formula for carbohydrates is cn <coughs> h2o n so you have one water molecule for each carbon atom so each carbon atom is hydrated so to speak by one water molecule for an example glucose has the formula c6h12o6 or it can also be expressed as c6 and h2o6 and note that the term sugar is often used colloquially to refer to carbohydrates and it specifically refers to carbohydrates that are sweet in nature and soluble in water following are the major types of carbohydrates you have the monosaccharides which are the simplest carbohydrates these include glucose and fructose then you have disaccharides which are made of two monosaccharide units for example sucrose which is made up of one glucose entity and one fructose entity and lactose which is made up of glucose and galactose then you have the oligosaccharides which are made up of 3 to 10 monosaccharide units maltodextrins and raffinose are the prominent examples and lastly you have the polysaccharides which are polymers made up of many monosaccharide units for example starch and glycogen now starch serves as the storage form of carbohydrates in uh, plants and glycogen serves the same purpose in animals next we have the lipids these are the different types of lipids you have the fatty acids which are the simplest lipids then you have the triacyl glycerols which were formerly called triglycerides next the phospholipids which make up cell membranes and then you have the sterols of which cholesterol is the most well known even laymen know the word cholesterol here the fun fact although all lipids are commonly referred to as fats in layman's language such as when people talk about a fat rich diet or a fat free diet technically only the triacyl glycerols or triglycerides triglycerides are fats the other classes such as cholesterol and fatty acids are technically not fats they should be referred to as lipids so all fats are lipids but not all lipids are fats next we move on to the proteins so these are the most abundant biomolecules in the body because they make up many of the body structures and they are made up of amino acids they are polymers of amino acids what happens is that large number of amino acids combine to form linear chains which are called polypeptides and these linear polypeptides undergo folding to assume specific three dimensional shapes these three dimensional molecules are called proteins the specific three dimensional uh, shape of the protein molecules actually allow them to serve certain functions for example some proteins serve as enzymes so you know there are specific sites on the three dimensional shape of the molecule uh, where the reactants can bind and that allows the protein to catalyze the reaction and proteins are very versatile biomolecules they have both structural and functional roles they are core components in skin muscles bones and hair and they also function as enzymes hormones and transporters they can even be used as fuel when the body is undergoing starvation actin collagen insulin and hemoglobin are some common proteins found in the body actin and collagen are both structural proteins found in muscles and cartilage respectively of course the functions of insulin and hemoglobin are very well known insulin is involved in controlling blood glucose levels and hemoglobin is responsible for transporting oxygen through blood let's discuss nucleic acids now they are of two types dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid and rna which is ribonucleic acids nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides just as in the same way that proteins are polymers of amino acids dna's sole function is that it makes up the genetic material of living organisms rna serves as the genetic material in only a few viruses these are you know for example the hiv virus influenza virus the dengue virus even the covid 19 virus in higher organisms rna has other functions such as serving as a messenger molecule 
Besides these carbon-based biomolecules, there are also some inorganic minerals such as sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, iron, etc. that play essential roles. They exist either as free ions in solutions, that is mostly plasma solution, that's uh, like sodium, potassium, chloride, etc. Or they may be bound to proteins uh, such as copper and zinc and in also in some other forms. And they have a variety of important roles. For example, calcium acts as a membrane stabilizer. Potassium and sodium are responsible for maintaining resting membrane potential. Iron as a part of hemoglobin is involved in oxygen transport. And zinc and copper are cofactors in important enzymes. And please note that these are not biomolecules because these are not organic compounds. Uh, these are not carbon based they are inorganic minerals but nevertheless they play important roles next we will discuss an important term that is metabolism metabolism is defined as the sum total of all the chemical reactions that occur within a living organism to maintain life all of the biomolecules that we have studied are involved in stepwise sequential reactions called metabolic pathways and nearly all of the steps in these pathways are catalyzed by certain enzymes. 